Ibn Hibban, rahimahullah ta'ala, the Imam, the Hafiz, he says that it is not mandatory for the intelligent person or not necessary for an intelligent person. And yaghtam, and it's a stress. Then a better way to say that with the same meaning is that it is better for, be fitting for the intelligent person that he does not stress, that he doesn't worry. An intelligent person develops their mind and their uh, the decision making pro- their decision making processes and so on and so forth, and they realize that there's nothing, there's no reason to stress any alham wal gham wal huzn being worried about the future, being stressed out about the current situation, being sad about the past. I mean, it's counterproductive. It's counterproductive. And so the intelligent person, he says, should not stress. لا يغتم لا يجب للعاقل أن يغتم The intelligent person, a wise person, an intelligent person, a strong-minded person, should not worry, should not stress. لأن الغم لا ينفع because stressing doesn't help anything. What does stressing do? Brothers and sisters, stressing, stress, takes away clarity of thought. It removes a person's ability to make good decisions. So this is great advice. There's similar advice in the book Al-Fawaid by Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. And many of the scholars have given similar advices to this. That it is not from the way of the believers. As Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions in his book Tariq al Hijratain, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there's a similar statement by uh, Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala in the book at tuhfatul al-Iraqiyya an al-Ahwal al-Qalbiyya about the condition of the heart and what and he occurs in the heart of the human being, that nowhere in the Qur'an or in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has Allah or has the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us or ordered us with sadness or worry or grief or anything of the sort. It's not for a person. It's not befitting for the believer to be sad, to be worried, to be stressed, so on and so forth. And everything of the sort that may have some connotation that is praiseworthy, like being remorseful over sins, and he is connected to something else, but in and of itself it is not praiseworthy or commendable or legislated or from Islam to be sad. Ibn Qayyim he says, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants sa'ada, he wants happiness and felicity for his creatures. Allah wants us to be happy. Remember that at all times and remind your children of that at all times. Remind the youth of that at all times. Remind your spouses of that at all times. When you see people stressed and worried, that it says of being stressed and worried, clear your mind and turn to Allah and raise your hands in dua and try to find the solution and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid those who turn to Him subhanahu fi ula. He says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, it is not befitting for the believer to stress. It's not befitting for the believer to stress because stress does not benefit a person. And having too much stress would denigrate the intelligence of a person, the, intell- the intelligence or the intellect of a person. وَلَا أَنْ يَحْزَنْ Neither is it befitting, he says, for an intelligent person to be sad. لِأَنَّ الْحُزْنَ لَا يَرُودُ الْمَرْزِئَ Because sadness isn't going to get rid of your problems. وَدَوَامُهُ يُنْقِسُ الْعَقْلِ And being consistently sad over things that happened in the past, يُنْقِسُ الْعَقْلِ Well, detract from the mind of a person, will lessen the intelligence of a person, will decrease the intelligence of a person. And there are statements from some Imams of the Salaf like Ubay ibn Ka'ab, as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala quotes and explains in some great detail in his book, uh, Madaraj al-Salikin, that even in, the ca- even in the case in a situation of Tawbah, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَنَّدَمُ Tawbah, the أَنَّدَم Remorse is in and of itself tawbah. 
And it's from the conditions of Tawbah that a person be remorseful. But once a person repents, it is not befitting, it is not correct, it is not from our religion for a person to dwell over and to blame and to shame their self for the things that they did in the past. They repent and they leave that thing. And they don't dwell upon that thing. And they don't let that thing define who they are. A person is not defined by their worst moments. So long as they repent and they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they try to make an improvement in their situation. And so a person should not be stressed and he should not be sad, should not be worried, so on and so forth. But a person should take advantage of the here and now and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to improve their condition and take action. And this is in the hadith, the well-known hadith of the strong believer and the weak believer. The strong believer is better and more loved to Allah than the weak believer. And there is good in the both of them. What is the difference between the strong believer and the weak believer? Ihris ala ma yanfa'uka wasta'in billahi wa la ta'ajiz. Be diligent in that which will benefit you. Seek the aid of Allah and do not be lazy. That's the difference between the strong believer and the weak believer. How much you are diligent and serious about what will benefit you. One. Two. How much you are seeking the help, the help and the assistance and the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while taking the means for that which will benefit you. And three, la, do not be in a state of ajaz. Do not be in a state of ajaz. Huna al-kasal. Do not be lazy. Do not act helpless. Do not be lazy. So this is the strong believer, the strong-minded believer, whose mind is clear and whose thoughts is clear and whose heart is pristine. That he is serious or she is serious about what is beneficial and trying to avoid what is harmful. Seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while taking the means and is not lazy. They don't procrastinate from acting upon their situation and trying to improve in their condition and so on and so forth. 